Hello and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your interest in our video abstract. My name is Roger Vaughn. I'm a doctoral candidate in the Department of Exercise Science here at the University of New Mexico, along with my colleagues Randy Garcia, Dr. Marco Basafi, Dr. Christina Trujillo, and our senior author, Dr. Carol Kahn. And we are discussing the topic of the effects of caffeine on metabolism and mitochondrial biosynthesis in muscle cells compared with dinitrophenol. A little bit of background, obesity has become a major health and economic concern for many developed countries with no foreseeable solution in sight. Chemicals like dinitrophenol were heavily researched back in the 1930s but were removed due to their lethal effects despite their potent metabolic effects. Caffeine, however, is still a commonly consumed documented stimulator of metabolism with very, very low lethality. So the purpose of our work was to examine the effects of caffeine and DMP on mitochondrial biosynthesis and the gene precursors of mitochondrial biosynthesis, namely PGC1-alpha, and to examine the effects of caffeine and DMP on metabolism. So we measured PGC1-alpha RNA using quantitative real-time polymerase chain reactions. We measured PGC1-alpha protein via flow cytometry, and we verified that with microscopy. Mitochondrial content was measured using flow cytometry with MitoTracker Green, and we verified that with microscopy. Glycolytic metabolism was quantified using extracellular acidification rate, or ECAR. Oxidative metabolism was measured using oxygen consumption rate, and tripan blue exclusion staining was used to ascertain cell viability. So figure one in the text shows that PGC1-alpha is induced by both DMP and caffeine in a time and dose dependent fashion. Figure 2 in the text shows that PGC1-alpha protein is induced very similar to RNA in a time and dose dependent manner by both DMP and caffeine. Figure 2c illustrates the verification of increased protein content through microscopy. We use the same antibody as in flow cytometry to do these microscopic techniques. Mitochondrial content shown in figure 3 shows that increased exposure time increases mitochondrial content following treatment with dinitrophenol or caffeine. And we also verified these using microscopy figure 3C. So we can see that there's increased mitochondrial content following treatment with caffeine or DMP, along with increased mitochondrial networking, which is denoted by the little red arrows. Glycolytic metabolism in figure 4 shows that basal glycolysis in figure 4b is significantly elevated following treatment with DMP or caffeine, and figure 4c shows that peak gly glycolytic capacity is increased following treatment with DMP or caffeine compared with the control. Oxidative metabolism is also significantly increased following treatment with DMP or caffeine. Basal oxidation is significantly elevated in both the treated groups. And peak oxidative capacity shown in figure 5D is exceptionally elevated in all of the treated groups as well. Oxidative reliance, represented as a ratio of OCAR to ECAR, shows that basal oxidative reliance is significantly increased in the treated cells. That goes down during peak glycolysis, figure 6C, but is significantly elevated in figure 6D, which is during peak oxidative capacity. Total metabolism, represented as ECAR versus OCAR, shows that treated groups had significantly greater glycolytic and oxidative metabolism, which is evidence of increased total metabolic rate. Figure 7a illustrates DMP, increase in metabolism in a time and dose dependent manner. And figure 7b and shows that caffeine increases metabolic rate, however, not in a dose dependent manner because caffeine at 250 micromolar tended to be more ideal than at 500 micromolar. Metabolic rate is also significantly increased following the treatment using measurements from a WST assay, which measures reduction potential within the cells. And following 24 hours, all of the treated cells had a significantly higher metabolic rate. Cell viability was not significantly affected by treatment with DMP or caffeine at 16 or 24 hours. 
So our discussion points are that caffeine and DMP increase PGC1-alpha RNA and protein in a time and dose-dependent manner. Caffeine and DMP induce mitochondrial production and total mitochondrial content. Caffeine and DMP also increase basal and peak glycolytic and oxidative metabolism, as well as total metabolic rate. And it seems that caffeine and DMP were not significantly cytotoxic to cells. Our proposed mechanism is that caffeine increases cyclic AMP, a documented effect, and has the downstream effect of increasing AMPK, as well as CREB, which act to increase PGC expression. DMP uncouples oxidative phosphorylation, thereby increasing the AMP to ATP ratio and activating AMPK and thus PGC, both of which lead to increased mitochondrial production. So in conclusion, caffeine appears to be as effective by weight and increasing metabolic rate as does DMP. It also increases favorable metabolic adaptations, including mitochondrial productions. Our findings support the advertised metabolic benefits of caffeine, but further research is still needed to identify if commercially available products containing caffeine offer the same increased metabolic benefits. Thank you very much for your interest. We hope you enjoyed our presentation.